Moving on to our task number six, local preference. So now we're going to use our local preference attribute to configure R1 to make all routers in AS100 prefer itself to reach where there's AS200 or 300. And we need to use a minimal number of command possible. So currently for uh, AS100 to reach 200 and 300, it depends on which router. We're talking about if it's R1, it will go directly this way. If it's R2, it will go out this way. And then for R5, I believe you might have it prefer R1 right now. So let's take a look on R5. We'll just do show IP BGP and then do a regex looking for 200 and or 300. Actually, this is preferring uh, R2 right now, it looks like. So R5 is also getting out this way to get to a AS200 or 300. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to configure R1 using the local pref and referring back to our Cisco doc, local pref is pretty much high up there. It's the second highest uh, attribute for a pass selection. Okay, so by default it said right here is value of 100 on the all the routes. This is being advertised by the IGP. So local pref is stays within the AS, unlike a med value or the AS path that you can influence a routing from an external network. Local pref is strictly within the same autonomous system. So local pref would not get advertised outside or across the eBGP session. Okay, so what we're going to do is to have R1 advertise all the routes as being received from AS200 and 300 to R5 and R2 to have the lo uh, preference a local pref higher than 100. Because by default, R2 will be advertising with the local pref of 100. As you can see right here, all the local pref for all the IBGP routes has a value of 100. So the way to do that with the minimal number of commands on R1 is you get under the router BGP 100 and you can set or change the default value of the local pref. So command is BGP default right here with the local preference and then you can set the value, any value that's higher than 100. So let's pick 200 and if you go back to R5, we might have to wait for a while, we might have to go back and clear. Oh, there you go. It looks like it took defect already. There you go. Just took a bit of time for that to propagate. So now you can see that all the local perf value for all the routes R5 has received from R1s are now 200. So R1 has become a preferred path for R5 to get out to the external AS, but not just the R5 that's being affected, you can also see the R2, it's 200, 300, so R2 is being affected as well. So you can see that now all the best BGP routes are pointing towards R1. Okay, so that's how you use the local pref to influence the internal IBGP routing. For the next part, it said, so we need to use a local pref to configure R2 and make sure that all of the routers in AS100 prefer it's itself for a default routes. Okay, so currently, if you look at R2 default routes, it's pointing towards R1, as well as R5 default route, it's pointing towards R1. So currently, both R2 and R5 goes through R1 to get out, but just for the default route, we want R1 and R2, or actually all the routers, to use R2 to get out for the default routes. Okay, so what it means is we're going to have to selectively change or modify the local pref off that route or an R2 and make it even higher than 200 because currently R2 is receiving a local pref off the default routes with the value or local pref value of a 200. Okay, so the way to do that is on R2. We'll come up with the prefix list for our default routes. Slash zero, quad zero slash zero. With a route map of from R4, permit 10. Should be under scroll right there. Match IP address prefix list default. And then we do a set command changing the local pref value of that default route to, let's say, 300, which is higher than 200. Okay, and don't forget to permit everything else. 
Then you go router BGP 100 neighbor 172.16.123.4. Route map from R4 and do clear IP BGP. In. Oops, I missed that. Dot. Okay, dot four in. So now just do a quick check. We see one hit already. Maybe you show IP BGP. Quad zero. See here is the best path, and the local perf of that route is 300 for the default. All right, which means if we now go to R1, do show IP BGP reg 200. You can see the default route is being preferred through R2 with the local pref of 300. Okay, let's double check on R5. And the same thing also happened to R5. That's now learning the default route from R2 with the local pref of 300. As you can see, the routes that has the higher local pref value is a more preferred route. And just do a quick trace route to a R6 loopback 8888. Just to confirm that R5 is in fact is taking R2, then R4, R3, and then R6 to get to that as for us to follow a default route. All right, that's our task number six. Okay, for our final task, task number seven with BGP weight attribute, we're going to be using our weight attribute and by configuring R2 to prefer R4 to reach AS200 and 300. So if you remember from our previous task, R2, it's currently preferring R1. So let me kind of get rid of all these. So R2 is currently preferring R1 since R1 is advertising with a local pref of 200. It prefers R1 to get to both AS200 and 300. Okay, so what we're going to do is to use the weight value and override that since BGP weight attribute has the highest preference. As you can see, it listed in number one right here. And the higher the value, the better the routes or the preferred route of the routes. But with the weight value, it only affects that just that one local router. It does not have any kind of influence or the weight attribute doesn't get advertised along with the IBGP. Uh, routes. Okay, so if you want to force a router just to point out a certain direction, then you can use the weight attribute. In this case, we're going to use R2. I use the weight attribute on R2 to point to R4 or use R4 to get to AS200 and 300 while it has no influence whatsoever on R5. So R5 is going to continue to follow the route with the highest local pref, which is R1, and then exit the AS. Okay, it's also said that we need to use a minimal number of command possible. So what we can do is to set all the routes that's being received from R4 and has the highest weight value. Okay, so on R2, let's do a quick show IBGP rush 200, 300 before we make the change. And currently R2 is preferring R1 for most of the routes. Obviously, except for the default route that we adjust the local pref to be higher than 200 in the previous task also. But the remaining of the routes is still preferring R1. So to override that with a weight attribute, we can set that at the neighbor level. That means any routes that's being received from that neighbor will have this weight value set. And it goes between 0 to 65 535. So we're just going to pick 65,000. Okay, and then do clear IPBGP just to make sure all those routes are being set with the weight. And then going back to the show command, you can see that the route has been set with 65,000 weight value, and those are the routes that's coming in from R4. And they're all being uh, prefer over the route that's coming from R1 right now. Okay, so all these routes, so R4, R4, R4. Okay, so that shows that the weight attributes pretty much overwrites local preference, or as a matter of fact, it's any other attributes also. Now, just to show that the weight attribute doesn't get transferred to R5, can do the show command one more time. You can see that R5 is still preferring R1. And 
all of its weight values or all those routes remain zero. Okay, the, basically the change we made is just take effect on R2 only. All right, and then we need to configure R1 using the weight to prefer R3 just for the default routes. So again, currently R1 or also R5 is preferring R2 to get out uh, follow default routes because R2 is advertised the default route with the 300 uh, local pref. But now we're going to force R1 to go out using R3, follow that default routes. Okay, and again, this only takes effect on R1. It should not affect R5. To selectively set the weight value in a route, it's very similar to what we did in the previous task when we set the local pref as just the particular routes. We have to come up with the prefix list to match that route that we want to set. So IP prefix, in this case it's the default route, permit quad 0 slash 0, route map from R3, uh, permit 10 match IP address prefix list, default route, and then we set this time the weight, again 65,000, and then we'll permit 20. Okay, so router BGP 100. 16123.3 with the route map of from R3 in do clear IPBGP 16123.3 in. Okay, now if you do a show IPBGP quad zero, you can see it has the weight of 65,000 and it effectively makes the routes a best routes. So we do show BGP 200, uh, 300. You can see it's now preferring R3 instead of R2 pre previously with the local pair for 300 for the default routes. Okay, as far as the R5, it should not be affected and it should continue to use R2 for the default routes. Okay, right there. Okay, and that's pretty much completes our task number seven. Now that we've gone through the whole lab, you can see there's quite a bit involved in the BGP best pass selection process as far as there's a lot of attributes and criterions you can use to make that happen. But I must say that in real life, you probably come across the most is the AS path and maybe local pref and weight, but not probably not so much of the met value. Uh, it's always good to have the, uh, these rules kind of in the back of your mind. So when you look at the BGP routing table, you know exactly which one of these attributes is causing the certain path to be selected. All right, so that's pretty much wraps up our video on BGP path selection. You can visit the website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminist.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.